Championship Heavyweight Boxing. It is for the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World. It is sponsored by Havel. The sanctioning body is the WBO. The supervisor is Leon Panoncillo. The three judges are ringside, Gerardo Martinez, Dion Duarte, and Dan Rax tap dancing. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge is Michael Ortega. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance here at the Vodafone Event Center in South Auckland, New Zealand, and for the millions of people watching this broadcast in over 170 countries around the world, ladies and gentlemen, would somebody, somewhere, make some noise? Sheridan here with Mike Gangove as Ruzvan Kajano, ranked number 14th in the WBO. You know the story, he gets the opportunity. He was a sparring partner for Joseph Parker when Huey Fury was injured, injured his back. He had to pull out two weeks ago. And this gives the sparring partner the Rocky scenario. Kojano from Romania knows that everybody in Romania is watching as he comes in with the Romanian flags he had an extensive amateur career over 300 fights over the years he's won dozens and dozens of amateur championships as a professional he was in the finals of the 2015 eight-man tournament called Boxino since that loss to Donovan Dennis he's won three in a row against uh, Decent competition, but not the highest of level. He's been in training camp with Parker twice. He knows him well. He sparred over 100 rounds with him. He worked with him to get ready for Dimitrenko, and obviously to get ready fighting Huey Fury's style. Now he gets a chance to fight his own style for the heavyweight championship of the world.
so Joseph makes his way in here. You know how big the night was a week ago when Anthony Joshua retained his title. Not the venue, but certainly the enthusiasm of the crowd on hand here in New Zealand. This is Joseph Parker World, and eventually these two guys will meet. Joseph Parker has to get past Resvan Kojano, who has nothing to lose. Joseph comes in here, 22 and 0, 18 knockouts. He's had a new conditioning coach, Elliot Calvin. Kevin Barry is brought in to get him ready for this fight. And Kevin feels like he had to fight. And again, a lot of credit to Duco CEO David Higgins, Dean Lonergan, for keeping this fight together. As Joe Parker has to fight a guy that can be very, very dangerous. We'll find out. As you take a look at the tail of the tape, everything favors Cogiano. The height, the weight, he's a mammoth guy. Five years older, much longer reach. Look at the record, though. So Joseph's undefeated. Cogiano, is he in the same class? Well, tonight we'll find out. One thing, Colonel, that I'm a little concerned about. And here we go with the lieutenant. It is for the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World, sponsored by Havel in association with Duco Events. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing red trunks with gold trim. He weighed in at 124.6 kgs or 274.6 pounds. He hails from Voinetsky, Romania, now residing in Sherman Oaks, Burbank, California, USA. He is ranked 14th by the WBO. He is the Romanian heavyweight champion from 2005 to 2009. He's the current WBO Asia Pacific heavyweight champion. He has 18 professional fights with 16 wins, two losses, with nine big wins coming by way of KO. Introducing the challenger, Razvan Bigfoot Gojano! and representing the beautiful country of Samoa. He has boxed 99 professional rounds of heavyweight boxing with an 82% knockout ratio. He is trained by world-renowned boxing coach and trainer Kevin Barry. He is an undefeated heavyweight world champion with 22 professional fights, 22 wins, 18 big wins coming by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, making his first world heavyweight title defense right here tonight. He is the reigning, defending, WBO heavyweight champion of the world! Introducing... This is for the heavyweight championship of the world. Ten point must scoring system, no standing eight count. There's no three knockdown rule, but it cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee Gentlemen, can stop we the over fight. The rules. One good clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Michael Ortega, the third man in the ring, is a veteran of about 50 time, world title Lachlan. fights. Let's he hails from eyes. Connecticut in the United States of America. Uh, let's see how it goes. Joseph Parker, 22 and 0, 18 knockouts. There's a lot lined up for him if he can get by this guy. Deontay Wilder in the United States and Anthony Joshua. And don't forget Tyson Fury still in the picture. And here we go, round one, heavyweight championship of the world. Parker, of course, in the black trunks, in the red, is Resvan Pojano. John, who's been very relaxed throughout the week, he says he is the underdog. Now, my concern for Parker is he needs to have the edge. He can't buy into this rel relaxation game. He still needs to be clinical. It's a big man in front of him. He needs to get him out of the way. 
Well, that's exactly what he needs to do. Joseph taking his time right now. Doesn't want to open up too much. He'd like to work on some things he thinks he might have to do against Deontay uh, Anthony Joshua. But it's different because Cojano has no fear of Joseph. Obviously, the hand speed of Joseph Parker. Joseph getting much thicker in the chest. Shoulders are getting much bigger with his new uh, strength and conditioning coach, that Elliot uh, Calvin I mentioned. He's on target with the jab early. Does have a very good jab, Joseph Parker. Downstairs, not much movement by Cojano. Uh, Cojano's got a, a, a slappy left hook. He does throw it pretty well. But uh, he needs to make an impact early as well. He doesn't want to take the sparring partner's route of just uh, falling in through rhythm. Cut Joseph with a crisp left hand and smiled at him. Joseph comes right back at him. Cojano holds the arms up. Hey, you didn't hurt me. Remember, this guy knows everything there is to know about Joe Parker. He sparred with him over a hundred rounds, getting ready for Dimitrenko and, of course, for Huey Fury. Huey, by the way, is still a mandatory, and at some stage they're going to have to fight. Digging that right hand to the body, They're looking to set up perhaps a left hook, or to create the reaction down low to come over the top with the overhand right. Big awkward sort of guy is Rusvan Kojano wild and wide with his right hand just because of his size he's got a lot of power and his 16 victories he has nine knockouts parker does need to joe comes upstairs blocks away upstairs and then Pajano ties him up and michael ortega has to separate the two parker just needs to keep his right hand up i was about to say just to be aware of kajani's left hook Cajano is sort of that Eastern European style. He's talking to Joseph Parker now. Holds the hands up. Now he's dropped the left hand down. Parker just uh, keeping him moving, keeping him turning. And that's exactly what he wants to do with a big uh, fellow like this. This is so huge for Cojano, and he's, he's so relaxed. But he's got to do something more offensively here. Joe comes upstairs, and it's partially blocked. On the back of the glove, this Joe showing some hand speed. Cogeno lights it up a little bit this time. Cogeno just smiling at him. Well, Cogeno didn't much do anything in that round, so that's a Parker round, 10-9. Good work to the body from Parker. Cogeno didn't offer much, but he's got out of the first round, and that can often be important. But one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to let the underdog get any confidence because it's hard to switch that around. Parker needs to keep him on the back foot. So far, big and slow. We listen to Kevin. Remember what we do when we do close. When we do close, we've got to angle out. Okay? Lots of work. We're working up and down. I'll tell you what's going to be there is that under and over is going to be there for us. I'm seeing it. You see it? Yeah, yeah. Left hands down. You see those guys are watching in the body. That, that overhand line is going to be there. Don't preach. This fight sponsored by Great Wall Motors. They're going to bring the Havel. It's China, China's number one SUV coming to you soon in New Zealand. We're moving to round number two. Let's see if Parker opens it up a little bit more here. First round of feeding out round for me. Looks like he's got an adrenaline flow going here now. Joseph Parker, of course, in the black trunks with the diamond trim. That's alligator and diamond. The trunks and outfit. Uh, young Taylor Barry designed, and they tell me it cost about $10,000. So he's wearing championship gear now. Certainly a little bit uh, more flash than my Kmart boxer shorts. Parker is on range early. Backed him up to the ropes. Now Kajanu will... I'm surprised he hasn't leaned on him a little bit more, wrenched the arm, just uh, done something to make Parker carry his bulk. Well, uh, Kevin Berry told Joseph, I'm going to allow him work from the outside. Take your time. Don't be too impatient here with this guy. You, Kevin, Kevin told me that Joseph knows exactly what Ruzvan can do, and he's well able to handle that in the gym. This is not... You know, 16-ounce gloves. These are 10-ounce championship gloves. So both guys have much more power. Oh, that time, 
Mikey, he does lean down on him, pushes him down. What did I do? What did I do? Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, buddy. We know exactly what you did. So does the referee. He just knew when to let go. Round two, heavyweight championship of the world at stake. And millions of dollars for the victor. People here in Auckland, of course, this is a world telecast. So we'll try to give it the even call for Kojana, but where I'm sitting, everybody wants Joseph Parker to win this fight. Uh, he's just pretty cautious of overreaching with that right hand. And this is where Kajanu needs to tie him up. Kevin Barrow's calling for the upstairs, downstairs, so working upstairs and down the body, but that also involves hand speed. And uh, in order to get the hand speed, Kajanu will have to allow him the arms free. If he doesn't do that, that will break Parker's rhythm. Kajanu's smiling at him, telling him he's a little exhausted right now. There's a lot more power with those hands coming with those, as I mentioned, the 10 ounce club. Joseph not trying to be too flashy, taking his time. Pagano got one to the head there, the left hook right back. Pagano said, nah, no power there. Right hand, there was power there. Joseph flips him with the right hand, crowds in with now. And this, this is the, the kind of stuff that Pagano needs to do. Now he's starting to tie him up. Now he's starting to lean on him. It's not the kind of stuff that Parker needs on the inside with the heads clashing. A cut can push his uh, activity back for six months. That isn't something that he wants right now. See Kajani just locking Parker's right hand underneath his armpit from the blind side of the referee. Mark. Johnson, window on that one. Well, it's a, it's a clear round for Parker, but just signs of frustration there. Again, Kajanu may have the inside running on just know, knowing how to edge on his uh, former camp mate just get inside his head a little for Joe it's hard to look good against this guy because he's he's so big and he he can tie him up now there's some good little work here from Kajanu oh, it was a little later in the round where he did some nice work tying Parker up Nothing's landed super clean yet. Glancing shot over the top of the head. Missing with that to punctuate the end of the round. And that's just Parker getting frustrated. Yeah, a little bit of frustration. He actually skipped forward. Now we'll see Joe turn it up another notch here in round three. At this point, nothing great for Joseph so far. But he's got to maintain his patience here against this big name of the guy and continue to try and break him down. But Jonah now is starting to have some fun in this fight. And Parker doesn't want to fool around with this guy at all. As I said, a big tall guy like this is hard to look good against. But Anthony Joshua is going to be a couple of inches taller. Not as tall as this guy. But he'll hit considerably harder and he's quicker. And Kajanu tie him up again. Parker just chopping over the top. Joe out of frustration, works Kajano a couple of times behind the head. Parker's just getting a bit predictable with the overhand. Well, he wants to land something now to make it definitive and take the smile off the face of Kajano. Remember, these guys know each other so well. Joseph up on the toes, Kajano smiling at him, trying to frustrate him. And that's the game plan. I mean, you've got to put your ears back and just come wailing at him. But so far, Kajano really hasn't opened up. Good hard body work. What you want to do with a big guy and bring those arms down. Kajano is allowing Parker to come to the body there and he's looking to get that left hand over the top and then he tries to switch him under his armpit. He's complaining about being hit over the back of the head but part of that's because he's uh, dropping his weight down on Parker. Joe needs to do what Anthony did in the 11th round and that's position himself as a big guy goes to pull that head and unleash an uppercut on the inside. Slapping left hook there, caught Parker on the way, and it was taken on the glove. He says, he yells never at Joseph. Now Joseph turns it up a bit, they exchange, and Joseph's trying to rough it up a little bit. Now Kajano. Okay, that's a hard warning about using the glove up in the hand of uh, Ron Van Kajano. 
Michael Ortega goes across the way to Kajal and says, hey, don't be hanging on the edge. And those were hard warnings, meaning a point can be taken away. Yeah, well, those are, that's good control by the referee. That's nice work from Parker there. He found an opening with the left hook. Just get back on his jab. He's got the speed advantage. Yeah, Joe needs to get up on the toes like this, move in and out, move around. He figures like he can take this guy out four, five, six rounds someplace there. Joe will continue to build up the pace as the fight goes on. But he's tired of fooling around with this guy right now. And like you said, Mike, a little while ago, you don't want to give this guy any false hope and confidence that he can do anything to hurt Parker. There's no offense from Rez right now. No, he's, he's just purely trying to frustrate him. A right hand caught him. There's a couple of overhand rights by Kujana. This is kind of tough stuff on the inside. And What he is doing, though, is he's frustrating Parker. He's frustrating the daylights out of him. He's making it for an ugly fight. And uh, just got a little bit of niggle inside the head of Parker. And this is where Kevin Barry needs to do a job with this boy. Get him to keep calm. Just keep calm. And you can see Kajanu there. He's just reaching for the head. He's waiting for Parker to leave it there so he can hold on to it, put it under his armpit just perfectly there. And maybe throw a couple of cheap shots and that's frustration from Parker both of them got the warning there Parker can get a little bit right hand happy maybe he just needs to bury that up a little bit now he's frustrated now Mike because he's been tied up on the inside that isn't really where he wants to fight this guy he's got to stay up on his toes Turn this guy, move him around. Keep it clean, guys. He's up on the toes, and Mike Ortega says, keep it nice and clean. There's the first outside punch from uh, uh, Rezvan. Kojano, this is the night of his life, and so far he hasn't done much offensively. That's the waltz away, and Joseph's picked it up a little bit more now. As he comes back upstairs, Rezvan better stay concentrating. Now he chops him with the right hand. Uh, he only wants to fight when he's hitting and holding. That's what he wants to do. Well, that's all he really can do. I mean, this guy isn't a gifted athlete like Joseph Park. I'd like to see Parker, when he chops down with the right hand there, I'd like to see him chop back upstairs, upstairs, downstairs with the right hand. Well, okay. Point off. Well, this is... this oh, he's is taking a point off. For John, oh, loses a point. Why? Stay off his neck. Oh, he's been pretty tight on that, Michael Ortega. There's Joe with what he needs to do. Use the hand speed upstairs, downstairs, then let the right hand go. So far, it's been very difficult for Parker to look real good here tonight. A little puffiness underneath his uh, left eye. Luciano has got a few through there. Parker's just uh, a little bit more tentative with his jab. He needs to get on it, and uh, Kajani just got a reaction there too. Not ideal. It's hard for Joseph to look good against this guy, and somehow I can picture Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearns and the whole crew over there in England just salivating at the moment. Yep. Double that left hook. Doubled up on the left hook nicely there. Step back, step back. Good job. And uh, there's Kajani's game plan quite clearly. Tie him up. Well, that's all he really can do. Get clipped pretty suddenly with that right hand that uh, starts the knee straight out of Kajano. We're in the fourth round. Nobody has been shaken yet. Kojano's uh, job, Mike, here is to frustrate and make this thing go as long as he can. He thinks if he can get this guy in the later rounds that maybe he can land something. I don't want to call lucky punches, but, you know, when a guy's that size, but he doesn't seem to have the hand speed at all. I don't know if Kajano's yelling at Joe, but Kajano seems to really be enjoying himself. I'd like to see Parker just second phase a little. Step back for half a beat. And, uh, and wait for Kajanu to, to, to wait for that break and then double back. And I think he'll catch him clowning. Well, Joe's getting real serious right now because he doesn't like being shown up. And right now, Joseph, I don't want to say he, he doesn't look good, but because it's tough to do what he's trying to do with this guy that knows every move. Joe goes with the right hand lead that time. He's kind of 
underneath that left cheek. Here he holds down the left hand and he catches him with the right hand. The gentleman might say, that's all you got? Uh, there's a couple of shots in the body. Now there's a point there off, a so this is a 10 8 round. Parker wins the round. And the point off for hanging on. Well, there's no question as to, to who's winning the fight, because Kajani's not offering much in terms of offense. Let's have a listen into his corner, Lionel Lara. Yeah, but don't listen. Trust me. Okay, listen here. Do it. Stop trying to be cute out there. Change your level and stay down. Keep that double jab going, mate. Nice job getting that, you know, the left hook, he cleared out the middle and then went down straight down the middle. But Joe is getting a little frustrated here. He wants to look good, and it's hard to look good against a big guy like this. A guy that really is here in survival mode, almost sparring partner mode. With all that's on the line for Kajano, if he could pull an upset, he hasn't won around yet. There was a combination right there at the end of the round where Parker jabbed, then he slapped the left hook and threw the right hand. If he can just catch Kajanu drifting into that, I think it'll do some damage. And again, with the taller guy, I'm always concerned about a guy like Parker getting cut. Joseph is going to open it up a little bit more here in the fifth round. And this is about where Kevin Barry told me he'd like to see Joe really tried to take him out. So let's see if Joe can pick it up a little bit. On the other hand, Corjano's got to turn it up a whole bunch more. I'd be quite happy to see just Parker just uh, pecking away with that lead jab. To, well, not so much pecking, but really opening him up with that jab. Yeah, Frustrating you know, him with his speed. He's got a lot of pride, Mike, and he, and he wants to look good in this fight. And it's going to be hard to look good against right. this guy. You notice how Joe's just falling in a little bit. He's, he's delivering his combination, he's falling in. Just like to see him take half a step back at time or change the angle, and that'll give him a second phase. Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, nice hard shot to the body, but it's going to take more than that. He's going to have to catch him on the other side, to the liver side, and try to cripple this big guy to drop him. And by stepping back, it doesn't allow Kajanu to sit on him. And then he can catch him second phase as Kajanu follows him. Time for Jano to get the right hand through. Joe, a little uh, expression on his face. This is what he needs to do. Keep turning him. For Jano tried to cut him off. Joe had it. Now, again, there, see, when, when Kajano goes over his head like that, just change your angle slightly and rip back with the left, left hook to the solar plex, and Kajano will stop it soon enough. Parker faints. Kajano talking to him totally, but breathing heavily. Here's that right hand. Joe got ripped that time by a decent shot. What's Kajano complaining about? He caught Parker just drifting long along the ropes there. Good left hook by Parker. Yeah, Joe caught him with a decent left hook, pushes him off. A little bit of puffiness between the left eye, that right hand foul. That time upstairs. Now he complains to the referee, and the referee bought it. He didn't hit him all, by the way. No, and it was actually a good body shot. I think he felt it. He's so tall, though, you, you take it in front of the elbow, and it could be south of the border a little bit, but... Uh, well, to be fair, there's, uh, there's, a, there's plenty of fence between the border there. He's such a big man. Well, Gajano, you got to remember, this is his, his role right now. People watching in Romania, this is the biggest thing, I think, since they hung Ceausescu. I don't know if that's politically good. Now see where, where Parker changed the you angle get the there. Idea. See where Parker changed the angle there. That's where he needs to just go under that and, uh, and try and deliver that left hook. Kajani just being a bit more sneaky. He's opening up a little bit more himself. Now it's a, you know, it's another Parker round. But, you know, again, all I can think of is people in the UK and around the world, when they're comparing the heavyweight championship fight a week ago, it's a whole different thing. Those two fighters lined up and really put on the show with knockdowns. And now it's time for Joe to put on his show. Well, he started off the round well. You see there coming in, in and out. And then a little later on, he just uh, bought into that. Now, th that long right hand is not something he will want to be taking from uh, Joshua or Wilder. So he needs to be cautious about that, particularly when he's backed up to the ropes. I mean, that's as good a punch there as this guy, Kojano, can throw for a guy that's, uh, you know, six, seven and a half. 
280 pounds of massive six. man. So we moved to round number six. Kevin really talking to Joseph Park round right now. Six. Let's see if Joe can turn it up and try to finish this thing off now. I think he's flat and frustrated. He is frustrated, and I feel for him. Yeah, but this is the fight game. There's a big winding up again from Kujanu. Park exactly, just, Mike. This is the fight game. It's a, it's a harsh mistress. You don't have anywhere to hide. Good work from Parker. Yeah, see, see how he's dropping the shoulder there. I don't think that's a good idea to try and bump him off with the shoulder. It's better just to step back and create more room to punch. Well, Joe is getting his room and he's trying to spin this guy around. Trying to set him up. Watch the body shot. He goes back upstairs. Double, triple jab. Now he needs to throw the right hand behind it. Joe's getting the perfect positioning now. Going between those high gloves. And as those high gloves come up, watch him rip the body. There's that slap left hook and that, that long left hook he throws will, because Kajanu's now starting to follow. And if he's following him, he can double the impact on a shot. Flip Joe upstairs again. He needs to rip him underneath that right elbow. Instead he rips him with the right hand upstairs. Downstairs first, then back upstairs. That was the shot though. He's trying to drift him into it. And maybe Parker can come with that uh, right uppercut as well. I caught him with a nice, decent right hand that time. Nice enough hook inside, right hand by Joseph Parker. Well, he we caught him clowning. Now you see the hand speed is there all right. Good movement from Parker side to side. He's just got to make the most of it. Side to side isn't what Kevin Barry wants him to do. Kevin wants him to, to get him circling and, and get him crossing his legs up. He doesn't, he doesn't really want him side to side. He wants to turn him. Yeah, that's better from Parker, though. Yeah, that was good there. If you're going to fight guys like Deontay and, and Joshua, you're going to have to be able to turn them. If you can't do that, it's going to be difficult with the power that those two guys have. Chopping right hand at the back of Parker's head. Then he leans down on the neck again. He's already lost a point back in the fourth round by Michael Ortega, but Michael trying to get control of the fight at that stage. Parker has gone under the last couple of right hands from Kujanu, which is uh, good to see. Kujanu, big, tall, awkward guy. Joe doing what he has to do. He's winning every single round. And while he's frustrated, he's not frustrated to the point where he's making foolish moves in the ring. Turn around, and again, he knows what he needs to do yeah. there. Step out of there, turn him around. Joe faints to the left. Gargano is just trying to frustrate him, talking to him throughout the court. Those are some solid shots by Joe Parker. Gargano hangs on and hits again. Watch again. You see Mike Ortega say, watch holding an inning. He's holding back. It just, he just seems to be a foot half a pace off the accelerator. Let's have a listen to Kevin Barry. Hey, we don't need to be there. When we're doing that, we're helping them get lucky. Maybe he's, hey, Joe, he's walking, he's walking around the gas. Okay? Keep your bounce going, go back to top of the gas. Go the body a couple of times, then change it up. Kevin Barry is a trainer. Taylor Barry is Seven the mate and assistant Seven. trainer. And Brian Barry from Christchurch, who trains fighters on his own nights uh, and in his own right, works as an assistant trainer as well with Joe Parker and is the trainer of Joe's brother, John, who won his fight tonight. So here we go. This is round number seven. Scheduled 12 rounder for the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World. First title defense. You know the story. Huey Fury was supposed to come down, injured his back. Sure, Frank Warren was sick about that. But Eddie Hearn might be happy because uh, he's got a couple of fighters that would be real interested in fighting Joseph Parker. So the promoters will see what happens. Parker's just... Uh... Again, good work there. He's listened to the corner, go downstairs, create room. This is nice stuff now by Joe. Up at the toes, 
using the left hand. Now when the guy comes in, he gets out of there. He doesn't have to take these shots. And that's what Kevin has told him. Well, take this guy's stuff. Get up and avoid him. When he comes at you, get out of there. Reset up. Get the jab established. Crash him with the right hand. He's got to start turning it up. Really show his championship ability, which he can do in a moment's notice. The right hand's here if he uh, throws it. Here's Joe turning it up here. Pagano smiles at him, which again just frustrates Joe. There's no smiling from Joseph Parker. As he comes off the ropes and lets Pagano hold him up. Walk him off. <laughs> He's really trying to suck what he can get out of the referee. He barely did anything there. Joe did pull down on his head, but uh, there's been enough of that. And Progeno lost the point, so even things up. If Joe makes any illegal attempts, he'll probably even it up by taking a point away from him at some stage. That's good but, work there from Parker. Yeah, just... that's all he has to do, Mike, is just continue to work like that. Stay on his toes. He should dictate. Don't let this guy come in. Now walk around. That's perfect. Spin him out of there. That's what he's going to have to do when he fights uh, a more competitive fighter like Joshua or Deontay. He's there for the left hook. He's, Parker's actually suckering him into the left hook if he can drift him onto it. Just with his movement. He'll take a stand right on top of uh, Cargano. Cargano has done everything he can possibly do, including talking and talking and talking to Joseph. Like I said, these guys know each other very well. Been in camp two times. Pagano continues to try to frustrate him, but he's not doing much offensively, and Parker just coasting the victory here. To this point, not one of the better heavyweight title fights that I've seen over the years, but Parker, on the other hand, is winning every round. He's showing glimpses of doing some good things, but... Uh just not sustained enough. Kajanu breaks his rhythm enough. And there was that uh, moment. Kajanu, very theatrical, arms out. That was a nice set of combinations there from Parker. Good work with the lead hand. That clip with an uppercut on the inside. And the left hand, he saw that coming. Parker doesn't have a lot of respect for the power of Kajanu. Which would indicate to me that he knows Pagano doesn't have a lot of power. Joe's not gassed by any way, shape, or manner. And now let's see if he tries to turn it up another notch. Because it's at this stage, he wants to take him out. I can assure you that. Mama Sala, Daddy Dempsey, Brother John all here. This is now round eight of 12. And Pajano's still here. Hasn't offered much. The odd combination in response, usually from hitting and holding. Parker looking for that trademark overhand right of his. Kajanu just <laughs> slapped him on the way out. There are a couple of heavyweight fighters that fought Mike Tyson in similar fights like this. I remember Mitch Blood Green was one of them that hung on, didn't do much offensively. And Bone Crusher Smith was a heavyweight champion. And, and he fought kind of the same way against Mike Tyson in, in kind of survival mode. And they weren't exceptional fights for Mike, and Mike was a really exciting heavyweight champion. Yeah, Mitch Green lived off that uh, notoriety for quite some time as well. That time the right hand was blocked. That big, long left arm of Cajano was able to block the right hand, not that one. Again, Parker needs to throw a little more than the right hand, needs to follow it up with the left uppercut, left hook. You never see Joe change expression much because he's all business in the ring. He never seems to get mad. He just fights. This needs to be cautious. He was drifting there. He's more of a jabbing right hand from Kujanu. Round eight. The Vodafone Event Center here in Manico City. 
You know, capital, you're funding for your success. One of our sponsors and an invest, Samoa. Glad that you can be with us as sponsors. This is uh, turning into one of those fights that look like they know each other well. It looks like Kajanu is able to do enough to nullify Parker. Again, Parker completely nonplussed by those shots. A little blood coming from the lip of Kajano now. I suspect he's cut inside the mouth or on the lip. Nobody has been down, nobody's been shaken. Joe Parker's landed all the punches. Kajano from time to time has landed a couple. Here he is trying to do the best he can. Now Joe talks back. Now these guys start talking to each other. Fight's going to break out here. Well, Parker's uh, getting very really angry. Turning it up. Kajano continues to taunt him. And now Joseph is looking like a guy who's annoyed. Showing the hand speed again is Joseph Parker. Parker's got, uh, got a lot more intensity about him now. There's a lot more intensity, and I suspect that he's really annoyed right now. Well, perhaps there's a little bit of a spark that was missing earlier on. He's been so relaxed through the week. And in fairness to Cajano, he's fighting, except for the fact he's not winning any rounds, he's fighting like a sparring partner, survival mode. Not fighting like a guy who's ranked 14th of the world. The Romanian flags, and they, they're pleased with the guy, and it should be. He's fighting for the heavyweight championship. Well, quite frankly, they're here to spoil the party. Yeah. I mean, those are kind of cuffing, clubbing kind of shots. Those were the shots that really annoyed Parker. And Kajanu's playing for the crowd. But uh, it did spur Parker into some nice, clean work. Kajanu might be uh, planning his way into a couple of uh, payday fights. Yeah, he might be as an opponent for some of these guys. But Joe Parker now wants to turn it up one more notch here in the night. He wants to close the show. And in order to do that, he's got to really punish this guy to the body with a couple of shots, then come back upstairs. Joseph really hasn't punished the body. I thought we'd see some hard left hooks downstairs. He's got, uh, he's got frustrated going to the body because that's where he's been getting held up. That's where he's been getting well, there's uh, a double tied up. Yeah, there's the double, triple jab, right hand. And that right hand, a lot of the time, has been blocked just by the, the behemoth of a guy being so much taller and those big, long limbs that uh, Corjano has. This Joe doing some nice work. The crowd gets into it a bit. You see Parker there, he put his hand up for to sort of pull the head down, and he should have continued to go and throw the right hand. Joe's a magnificent shape. There's the body shots. Get off his neck. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Michael Ortega will not let them lean on each other. Let's see if he wants Joe now. Push him down on him, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. telling you, he's looking to take a point away to yes. even the thing up. Well, he allowed Kajani to do it earlier. Kajano's puffy underneath that uh, left eye of his. Joe spins out of there again. That's a nice move for him. Get away, get reset up again. When he spins out, that's where he needs to go back to the body with the left hand. Kajano making facial expressions to Joe. So when they get, that's the uppercut. Oh man, he's doing everything he can to frustrate Joseph Parker. And Parker does not like it. This is his home arena. Brought up not too far from here. And this will be the last heavyweight championship fight in New Zealand. They've been able to have two of them when he won the title against the tough Andy Ruiz. And this is for his first title fight. And again, I pointed out it was supposed to be Huey Fury, but he came up with that back injury and didn't make the trip down here. And Duco did everything they could do to keep this together. You see how Kajanu walks forward. Watch him double bounce and bang. And that's where Parker needs to double back on. Just trying to catch him there. Walk him into a shot. Joe hit him good to the body see, again. Back here he upstairs comes. with the left hand. Kajanu keeps talking to him. Saying, hey, nice, nice, nice. 
right there. See where Kajan is just stepping into range. Packers defense, to be fair, hasn't been too bad. But this guy is so slow and lumbering. Uh, it's just just to me I get I can see the frustration in Joe and I don't blame him. I mean after the great heavyweight championship fight in England last week he wanted to shine in this fight and it's just so hard to really shine. It's so frustrating. Yet he's won every round. And that's all you can ask a fighter to do. Well to be frank I, I don't actually think Kajanu Oh, he's probably of a similar level to Dimitrenko, who's actually just got himself back into the top 15 in the world with a knockout victory the other week against uh, Adrian Garnett. Kevin again wants him to turn. Don't stand in front of him. Double and jab. Right hand. That's Mama Sala. The uncles are here. Uncle Rudy. Uncle Henry. Henry Seward. Here we go. This is round number 10 on the schedule 12 rounder. WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World. Joe Parker trying to look good against a big, tall, lumbering heavyweight named Rezban Pujano, who's not cooperating in the game plan of Joseph Parker. This left hand. Kevin wants him to hit, come back out, get set up again, and attack again. Rezban Pujano hasn't shown any sign of ability to hurt Joseph. But again, Joseph hasn't been able to knock him down. That's a nice little up jab from the hip. Johnny looking for that slapping left hook of his. Claret coming out of his mouth. And that's landed several times, and Johnny just opens his hands and says, what's that? Is that all you got? Well, those are piling up. That's where Parker needs to go straight back downstairs afterwards. Keep him busy, take him back downstairs, and then go back up. Joe moves away in the black trunk, slides was right now. He's set up in front of him. Cogeno comes in, and he turns him again. And that's what Joe wants to do. And that's what Kevin Barry, who is just one of the best trainers in the world of boxing today, wants to do. Joe, Joe got finally the first smile I've seen in his face tonight when he made him miss that. Double, triple jab. We're in the 10th uh, round, and, you know, even though it's not a, an action-packed heavyweight championship fight, the fighters are working hard. Joe Parker especially is working hard to try and take this big behemoth out. He's doing his job by winning every round. But there's a big difference in class, and that's what I want you people that are watching around the world to see. This guy's ranked number 14 in the world that he's fighting, and he's not in the same class with Joseph Parker at all. Not particularly making Joseph look good, but that isn't his job. His job is here to make him look bad. Back, step back, step back. And that's about, you know, all he's done because Joseph has won every round, and that's all he has to do. Sometimes it just, uh, you can't knock everybody out. He's taking this round off a little bit, Parker. Don't like to see him allow himself to be backed into corners. He needs to throw punches to get himself out of there. Hard right hand that time coming out of the corner. Joe takes a deep breath up at his toes. See, he's turning him all the time now. Going to the right, going to the right, stepping out behind him. I think he's clowning him now. He's clowning Kajanu, giving him a bit of his own treatment. Kajanu hit him to the body and clipped him pretty good with the left hook. His Joe comes back with two hard punches in the room. Now they're smiling back and forth to each other. Well, that was a little bit of a... a right at the back, the general hit him with an uppercut. And Joe looks at him much to say, what's that? This looked like he chopped down with, a, with his forearm there at some point. Just more frustration, Mike, for Joe. 
Kevin's so smart there. He just said, don't let this guy get lucky with a shot. You've won every round. Just continue to do what you're doing. It's not going to be pretty. Nobody's going to say it's one of the great heavyweight championship fights of all time. But in two years from now, or a year from now, when the big money fights come, it just goes in the W column, and that's Second all that's important. See, he banged him in the back of the head there. The last thing you want in the last two rounds is for an injury now for Joseph. A cut around the eyes, or any other type of injury. So all he has to do is box him now. What are you worried about trying to look great and knocking him out? Just finish the fight without getting hurt. And don't get careless. That's the business side of boxing right now. Remember, there's millions and millions of dollars involved in this. Not so much for Kajano right now at this stage, unless he gets very, very lucky. But there is for Joseph. Well, this is his office, the ring. Parker just waiting a little bit too long. He's allowing Kajano to come in. Well, Kevin gave him the exact proper instructions. Don't get careless with this guy. You won every round. Just box him. Turn him. Don't worry about the knockout. Just win the fight. And that's good advice. This guy's impossible to look good against. Get into a nasty sort of pattern there. Paco gets backed up to the corner. Throws a couple of shots. Kajani walks in. Grabs Parker. Spins out. Parker back on his back foot now, but when he plants it, he lands a hard right hand. Needs the uppercut there. The problem with what Kevin said is that it's not the nature of the fighter. Fighters fight. It's a there's different breed of athlete. There's a bit of blood coming from somewhere. A little uppercut in there. I think there's a cut inside the mouth of Kajano. Let's see it. Maybe his tongue, but Jonathan trying to load up the right hand. And that's, you know, Joe did kill us in just a second, but he's taking a deep breath. Get outside this guy's punching area. Marcus uh, just had a little mental break this round. Well, he's frustrated, and, and you can understand that. And now there's nothing for this guy to lose. And Kevin doesn't want to drag him into a, a, a fight right now. Just out boxing. He walked Kajano into a step right hand there. See, so Kajano is a guy that's forcing the fight right now. It's, you know, it's all or nothing for him. He's got absolutely nothing to lose. If he gets caught, if he gets injured, it doesn't make any difference. This is the biggest payday of his life. Parker's just taking this round off, really. That's all he has to do. That's what Kevin told him to do. Kajano's pushing his head away, and he tells the referee, hey, he's holding it. Just a chopping punch. Yeah, that blood is coming from inside the mouth of Kajano, Mike. Yep, all oh, the stuff. Spattered by a little bit of blood here ringside. I'm actually going to give that round to Kajanu. Parker took most of that round off, although he probably landed the cleanest shots. Okay. You work your double jab, you work your double jab, you move, you sit and you catch him as he's coming out. Then you move again, you don't stand there with him, okay? One round to go, box smart. I don't want to see your hands down, I want to see your chin down and your hands up, all right? Come on, baby, one every round. Let's take care of business. Let's take care of business here, all right? Razzle's come out crazy. Box, box. He's going to jump onto something. Get him behind your jab. Stay balanced, walk around him, turn him, turn him, and then try and catch him. There's the instructions of a guy that knows what he's talking about. Just left him with one thought. Don't make a mistake. I remember a fight that I did several years ago. 
when Michael Moore was winning every single round just like this. And a guy by the name of George Foreman caught him in the last round and became the heavyweight champion of the world. With that one, two. Cojano is going to try to turn up the pace here and finish strong. And if, if uh, Joe does exactly what Kevin says, don't worry about what anybody else is going to say. This is a W all the way. And you don't want to get caught by this big guy, and you don't want to get caught. So jab, box, and turn him. He's going to take loose from the gloves of Kajanu. Kajanu is so frustrating. I, I can feel it for, joy, uh, for Joe. Kajanu's done what he's had to do. If his job was to frustrate Joseph, he did a great job. The people in Romania, your guy got a chance to fight for the world title, a title he never expected. So don't be disappointed because it's been a great night for everybody in Romania to at least see your man get a chance to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. He's fighting a very, very skilled heavyweight in Joseph Parker. Halfway through the 12th and final round. In a sloppy, lackluster heavyweight championship fight, Parker has done what he came to do. He's won every round of the fight. Neither guy has been down. Neither guy really shaken. Joe doesn't want to get killed, but he's a fighter. He would love to drop this guy. We saw the first uppercut he's thrown in the fight just then. Landed. Joe knows what to do. He walks him back, grabs him. Joe cut loose with the right hand, landed on the button, but it didn't shift this great big guy. Inside of 32 seconds to go in this fight. Joe Parker all the way. Nothing pretty, but he's done what he came to do. In 23, 22, 21 seconds, he will retain the heavyweight championship of the world. And now he takes it on the road to Europe. All the big money in boxing now is in England. And here's Joe trying to finish real strong as he turns it up a notch for just seconds remaining. But look at, look at the guy from Romania. He caught him behind the head. Joe the finish real strong. That's it, the fight's over. So in the very closing seconds of the fight, we saw the best part of the fight. Well, the frustration boiled over. Still couldn't finish him. I was surprised by Kajanu. I think uh, he showed a, a pretty decent pair of whiskers, but sometimes when you know you're going to be hit, you're prepared to get hit. And he did what he needed to do to survive and frustrate. Probably a disappointing performance in terms of wanting to impress on the world stage, won't be striking fear into the hearts of uh, heavyweights around the world. Uh, but take the win and move on. Yeah, but that, that's it, that's all you can do. Very, very sloppy heavyweight championship fight on the heels of what happened a week ago in London, but that's not important. This goes as a win for Joseph Parker. He won every round. I scored at 120, 107. How the judges have it, it doesn't make any difference. The fight's over now. Yeah, I think I managed to get when you know each other too well, it doesn't make for a great fight, and that was probably the case. But watch this nice flurry here at the end. Well, this is where they started to really tr trade blows. Parker just wanted to get his men out of there. Kajanu thudding away with the ugly lunges. The referee, Michael, will take it. Did his job well as a ring bouncer. Well, let's talk about what the future is now as you take a look at this. Deontay Wilder wants to fight Joseph right away. That probably won't happen because Deontay doesn't get big money in the United States. Wilder is not the money move right now. Joe needs to fight in the UK. Probably Tony Bellew is what they're talking about with his win over David Hay. 
In the meantime, Joshua will probably have to uh, go to the rematch clause with Klitschko. If not, he's got two mandatory defenses of both his title, WBA and the IBF. And in 120 days or so, Joseph still has to defend against Huey Fury. Those two fights for Bello or Fury would be, you know, big paydays, big attractions in England. Okay, we're all set. Let's make it official. Here's our ring announcer, Lieutenant Dan Hennessy. Danny. Fighters to the center ring, please. important thing is he's still the WBO heavyweight champion of the world and now they take the show to the UK. So Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren get ready to promote some big fights with Duco and Top Frank. Joseph Parker is coming from down under to up above. Well Joe you wait for the music to come down a little bit? You normally like to say a few words before we dissect the fights, and now's your time. Oh, yeah. Firstly, thank our Heavenly Father for this victory. And what a fight. I guess you can all see why we bring Razvan into camp with us, because we look for the best to prepare for the fights that we have. I'd like to thank Razvan and his team for coming down and putting on a great fight. Uh, Hopefully it's, uh, it was a great fight for you all. It's probably one of our last one for a while. So I'd just like to thank you all for coming out and supporting us throughout my whole career so far. And I'd like to thank everyone in attendance, thank my parents for being here, my team, Coach Kevin Barry for all the hard work we've done, and thank the Prime Minister of Samoa and the team for being here today. Joe, from a very early or young age in boxing, did you ever realise that you were going to win a world title and defend a world title on New Zealand soil? If that's the last fight we see here for some time, what's your thoughts on that now? Uh, you know, I've, I've done my best to keep the fights here in New Zealand. I guess it's time for us now to move overseas and get some exposure overseas. But I um, don't think that I will get a world title at this age. But it comes down to the team that we have. Coach, we have a great partnership. And just without, without all the support of people here and people back home, we wouldn't be here today. So once again, big thank you. And uh, I'll get Kevin to say a few words, if you like. Kevin, there's no one better in heavyweight history at the moment, current, that know Joseph Parker as well as Razvan, and, and it proved to be a difficult task to, to try and get that fight out of him. Well, if you remember, you know, I told everyone when you wrote Raz, Razvan off that this was a real guy and this would be a harder fight than Huey Fury. But the TAB never listened, a lot of other people never listened. We've sparred 100 rounds with this guy. We know how friggin' tough he is, and he's a very proud man, as you can see today. He was, he was fighting with pride and dignity. We knew it would be a tough fight. And still, tough fight. Plenty of support in the crowd, worrying and cheering Joe on to get success. You yourself, in the late rounds, were saying, look, Joe, make sure we get the win. Don't give him an opportunity to get the lucky punch. 
Sure, you know, hey, Raz was trying from the first round to the twelfth round. You know, as you saw, he let his hands go. He was looking for the punch. It only takes one punch to change the championship. And you know, when I realised it was going to take us a while to break him down, I said to Joe, you know, just be patient. You know, Raz is fighting the fight of his life. Don't help him get lucky. And you see, right up to the bell went, he was still throwing punches, trying to win the title. We saw a great title fight last week. Obviously, this didn't live up to the hype, but in terms of uh, the other big names around the world, you've said uh, pre earlier on in the night that you will take them on tomorrow. Is that still the case? Yeah, most definitely. You know, styles make fights, and uh, you know, it's our time now to travel overseas and campaign over there. Well, Raz, Razvan, obviously you're here on behalf of uh, Romania and your family to try and get a job done. Yeah, they're here. Um, happy to get your world title shot. Say that again? Were you happy to get your world title shot and have your family here to, to witness it live? 100%, man. Can I say something now? First of all, I'm going to say something in Romanian. Argi, te iubesc, David, te iubeste, tata, și Alex. I just said I love my wife and my kids, so don't think I said something wrong. I want to say hi to all the Romanian, first of all. All the New Zealanders, thank you very much for this opportunity. I hear you guys. Now, back to the fight, right? To be honest, and now this is the moment of truth. I don't know if I deserve that uh, one point deduction, but I respect the referee and I bow my head in front of him. I saw the fight much, much closer than how I was on the scorecard. Doesn't matter, it's New Zealand, it's not Romania or other country. I understand that. I think, and I don't think, I give all my best to be the champion today. I had a guy in front of me, his name is Joseph Parker, with more experience than me. You saw it in the ring, he ran. He didn't accept the fight. I tried to take him out from his game plan. I talked with him in the ring, I forced him I, to change him. to. You know what? I got 12 day notice for this fight. I give everything what I had. I hope I make you guys to have fun and you enjoy this fight. Thank you very much. Thank you for my team. Journeyman, God bless. Razvan Kanjanu. Let's do a rematch. And your champion, Joseph Parker. Well, some final thoughts here at ringside. Mike, you go first. I think it was a, it was a disappointing heavyweight fight. Uh, they obviously they clearly did knew, know each other. Joe struggled to sit down on his punches and make an impact on a sparring partner who did enough to put him off his game, who got inside his head, who frustrated him. But he's got the win, and now he's uh, looking.